back to Let's Talk Books. It's another year, so that means a new, highly anticipated Colleen Hoover book. Last year, I read It Ends With Us. Absolutely loved it, if you want to check out my review of that. But this year, she came out with a new book called Without Merit, and it's a YA book. She hasn't done a YA book since Hopeless. Without Merit is just essentially about a girl who is 17 named Merit, and she lives in a house that is filled with a lot of dark secrets from the past. Eventually all of them start spiraling out of control and she just can't hold all those secrets inside anymore. And emotions are drawn and people's lives are basically changing. She has everything on her shoulder and essentially she just has to let it all out. Uh, that's really all I could really share with you guys. I do have a written review on this that is spoiler free. Please check that out. I will link it down below if you want to know my thoughts on it without being spoiled. Another thing, if you want to win a copy of this book, I will leave the link down below as to how you can win a copy of Without Merit, which is really exciting. Just as always, thank you so much to Atreya Publishing for providing this book for me months in advance and being able to read it before most people that was really exciting so uh yeah uh if you haven't read this book please leave and then come back so we could discuss this together if you're gonna need some tea some cookies some snacks some whatever you want come back and let's discuss without merit guys this book if you read my spoiler free re review you know i didn't give this a high score i gave it i believe two stars so this was definitely a disappointing book for me. I had a lot, a lot of issues with it. I want to get into a lot of the things that happen in this book, but obviously I can't get into everything. So let's start off in the beginning. The beginning really threw me off and really made me dislike it before I knew I was actually going to dislike this book. I was really afraid that it was going to be a, you know, insta-love book and I don't know. It definitely gave that vibe in the first chapter because when Merritt goes and is at the thrift shop and meets Sagan, like that whole interaction was like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't want this. Like it was just too much on her end. She was so like fascinated with this kid and like he just works at the shop. Like there was like nothing there. And obviously as the story progresses, we understand her more and, you know, we dive into her as a character a lot more. And my first initial thought on this girl was like, she probably has some deep issues as we did discover she does. And the whole idea of her collecting trophies was definitely an odd trait to have as a character. I definitely question that a lot as to why she does it. Then when you find out that Sagan thought that Merritt was twin sister Honor, then I was like, okay, cool. Now I understand why like they kiss, but it still doesn't make sense as to why she felt the need to kiss him back. Um, but I understand Sagan's part of it all. So when you're introduced to the Voss family, it's definitely a lot to take in and handle right off the bat. They're not your ordinary family. Or maybe they are. I guess they could be. I compare them in my written review of the play slash movie August Osage County. It definitely gave me that vibe and like the family dynamics were just so all over the place. Every character had something going on with them that was semi-realistic but some not so much and it was just like mayhem. The entire family was mayhem. But when you find out about each character, especially Merritt's sister Honor, that was definitely an interesting one. The fact that she is into men who are essentially dying. And even though we get into her reasoning behind it, it's like every time like we find out the reason behind a character's choices and whatever, we get the reason, but I still don't understand it fully. I think when Honor explained to her sister as to like why she does like men who are dying, it was just like, really? No, like I, I just didn't buy it at all. And I just don't like Honor as a character whatsoever. Like, no. But one thing that I did like about this book was the fact that I was so sucked into Merritt's head and the, and the way that she was thinking. I almost like became her in a way. Everything that she thought, obviously I thought and I was thinking, kind of started off with the relationship between honor and Sagan like we were led to believe that they were a couple like it just made sense everything in Merritt's head 
was so really not what it was in real life. Um, she is very, very close minded and she only thinks about herself. She is so fixated with her own thoughts and what she believes that she doesn't ever give other people a chance. She just thinks one way and that's it and she doesn't really like to analyze the bigger picture here. She thinks about one thing, she sticks to it and that's that. And so I was kind of thinking that way as well which is kind of weird. It's definitely a more in interesting experience re-eating this book because again I was led to believe all these things but a lot of them you know weren't really true. One of that is the fact that Sagan and Honor were not together. As I was reading it I was like oh my god like he's in the house he's living there he's with her sister like she has a big crush on him. I, I felt like so bad for her because I could just imagine dealing, dealing with that having to see him every day and they were essentially like cuddling a lot but we really didn't see them interact fully as a couple but I found that interesting how I still just believe that they were. Uh, one thing I definitely want to address but I will fully get into it later on. I definitely knew what the big stark secret was in the family between Merritt and Utah. The moment, so there was a scene in the beginning in the kitchen where Utah came in and she was talking about you know all his like character traits. Once that encounter happened between Utah and Honor and Meredith made that comment saying like he was about to do the same thing to her but then her thought was he knows better not to and right off the bat I knew something serious happened between them. I was definitely thinking something worse than what actually did happen but I definitely got it right away that something not so appropriate happened between them. I thought that maybe I was thinking too far ahead and I was just overthinking it but I was not because boy did this book pack a punch of serious craziness between like every chapter. I was enjoying that in the beginning but then it got too repetitive and it just became really unrealistic to me. Once Luck came into the picture, which by the way, I freaking love him as a character. Like he needs his own book. I think he's hilarious. There's this dark underlining thing about Luck as a character and I found him the most interesting out of anyone. And I wanna explore him more. So Colleen, maybe you could ex explore him more. I think he's a very interesting person. So once Luck came into the picture, I was like, okay, so she meets this, this guy. I'm like, oh my god, is he? Is this gonna be like a love triangle? What's gonna happen? Like, who is this kid? And like, he was very weird and quirky, and I really enjoyed him. And when we find out that he's the brother or half brother of Victoria, the stepmom, I was like, oh wow, okay. Like, it got interesting. I was different. I like it. Where's it gonna go? It went places, but it went places that were so like lifetime movie-esque and soap opery that I was like, I almost just couldn't wrap my head around everything that happened because it just felt silly and ridiculous. He comes into the picture and I love him because he, he pushed Merritt's buttons, but in a fun way that kind of just broke her out of her shell a little bit more. And I liked that a lot. That's why I thought essentially that he was going to like be a love interest. But I'm glad that he was not because ugh, we just didn't need that as well. Even though we almost got there. We almost got there. When they almost had sex, I was like, this cannot happen. Like, this was just like, this was far effect. Like, I understand they're not blood, but it's just weird. And it made me really feel sad for her because she felt like, sex didn't mean anything because that's kind of how luck portrayed sex. So when she was just gonna give up her virginity for her step uncle I was just like oh god god no. Thankfully I think the phone rang or something and it stopped. Thank the lord because I didn't want to I didn't want that at all. So I want I want to get into Sagan a little bit because boy I love him like he saved this book for me. I just found him to be not only just like a charming human being but just kind. He had issues but it didn't define him. He wasn't like the nerd or the badass or this or that. He was just a guy who, who had an unfortunate thing happen to his family and he was just stuck in a place where he just didn't know where to go. He was able to express his emotions through his drawings and he 
eventually, you know, found merit. And, you know, he really l liked her as a person and he really wanted to get inside of her. He noticed her in a way that no one else in that house noticed her. I hate that house. I hate that family so much. I have, like, hatred for them. And Sagan was, like, this breath of fresh air. Made her understand that, like her life is precious and she's beautiful and she's all these great things and he was just like this ray of sunshine i loved him so much and like there was that scene um where she was giving like the silent treatment this was before they even like had any sort of like big like conversation or interaction and he drew that drawing for her just that picture alone it validated for her that he heard her silence and that was a moment where I was like oh my god like that was just a beautiful scene to happen and just very very just precious so as things go on you understand that she doesn't have the best relationships with pretty much anyone in her family uh unfortunately her mom is dealing with a mental health crisis her father is just like doing his own thing you know he has his ex-wife down in the basement his new wife and it's a very very complicated so she doesn't really have a lot of relationships and you would think that the one relationship that she would have that she would be close with would be her sister honor but unfortunately honor is another one who's not my cup of tea so let's get back to this. this this wasn't even like a roller coaster this was like those things that like a mouse goes on it goes like this like we're just going and going and going the one scene that kicks it off obviously the scene with Merit and and luck was one of them but when <sighs> Merit finds luck and utah together that's what i my my ipad almost broke i was like i'm done colleen what are you doing? I mean, it was the icing on the cake, but things just got worse too. And it was a feeling where like, I enjoy like being like this. And I like books that give me emotion, whether it's good or bad, angry, sad, whatever it is. And even though I enjoyed that aspect of like constantly being like, Ugh, I was still like disappointed in that because again, I just didn't feel like it was realistic at all and coming from her who writes books that are so honest I just felt like it got lost. Another thing happened and she's in the kitchen she sees her dad coming out of the basement and he something about this was it rubbed me the wrong way. When she sees that happen um, it, it's so twisted like if you really think about it if you really just sit there and think about it think about how mentally damaging it all is it's messed up okay not only for her mother who is who is deeply in a bad mental state and for her father to have sex with her is disgusting I'm sorry I think it's so wrong and the fact that his daughter had to witness that not only did all the kids have to witness her father cheating on her all that in itself is so mentally damaging. He doesn't own up to it in the way that I think he should have. I don't agree with a lot of things in this book. But the fact that you have your new wife and all your kids in the same household and you're still doing that is even more disgusting and just... Mm. No. And then you have that scene where Merritt pretends to be Honor and tries to trick Sagan. And that was kind of like the melting point for her because she almost like saw herself through like Sagan's eyes because Sagan really at that moment realized how much Merit is just going through something not good. That was kind of like the tip of the iceberg for her and that's when everything just exploded. She wrote that letter and everything was poured onto the table for us to read. And that letter was, that was when my eyes opened more to her as a, a character because we got to see everything. So happy that she was honest with herself at that moment. And even though she didn't want to believe it, it essentially was a suicide note. I thought all along that she was going to run away, that she was going to write this letter and run away. I didn't think that she would um, try to kill herself. That was something that I was definitely taken by surprise. And 
when she writes this and you learn about everything that happens between her and Utah and just like her just pouring her heart out on this piece of paper and just see there was just so much anger in it and she was just sick she was just sick of carrying it all inside of her that she just had to let it out I'm glad that she did it it saved her life writing that and when she took those pills which we find out are just fake placebo pills thank god she she took those and I was absolutely heartbroken in that entire scene from beginning to end when Sagan finds her and that entire oh my god I have chills just thinking about it when Sagan finds her and he makes her throw up that was such a powerful powerful scene that I believe it made me even more upset because this is what this book was about. I just feel like a lot of the things that were in it just didn't need to happen. Uh, there was a bigger meaning behind this book and I just don't think that we needed all these like nonsense oh my god moments to get to that point in the book and to really un understand in the meaning behind this book. Even though those pills were placebo, say they were not say if Sagan was not there just what if all these what if moments and her father still still didn't fully understand what Merritt was going through and still didn't give her that opportunity to go to the hospital and get help she was someone who needed those 72 hours of evaluation because she attempted suicide whether she wanted to just get drunk just because and she wanted to escape for a little bit and just black out there were emotions there that were deeper than that that was her father's perfect opportunity for her to get help and he didn't do it and i am so grateful that sagan was there because her entire family was just not there for her her mother her sister everyone was not there for her in real life sagans don't really exist um, maybe for some people, but realistically, there's not going to always be a Sagan there for us. And thankfully there was for her. This is real life and these are things that are happening every day. And I'm glad that even though I hated these, these characters, I hated them because they are so like real. I definitely commend Colleen on doing that. I'm bringing these characters to, to light, whether they are good characters or bad characters. People may have characters like that in their own lives while yes a lot of the things in here were a little like out of hand and didn't need to happen to get the point across I didn't like everything leading up to the big reveal I, I still appreciate um where it went and I'm happy that it went to a place that I wanted it to go then when we find out that Sagan confesses to what actually happened um I was still I'm still iffy on that and I understand him. He was such a young boy going through an identity crisis. I still like was iffy on the reasoning behind it. You could agree or disagree but I'm happy that they were able to talk it out and really she was finally able to understand everyone's point of view and their reasoning behind their actions which you could agree with or not as do I. So, but I'm just glad that she at least was not just stuck in her head anymore and she was finally was getting answers that she deserved and that she could at least just let that all go for her. When we find out more about her mom and that she really wasn't sick, a lot to like take in and, and I'm still kind of like on the fence with how everyone's reasoning behind things were brought up. It still makes me sad for Merit that she you know has parents like that and that they're dealing with stuff like that the moments that i definitely liked is obviously more about sagan because he's the best when she when he does the tattoo for her he turns something negative into something positive for her and i think that was definitely a beautiful moment to have then we get to the point where sagan finally really just opens up and asks her like straight out like are you depressed like She's a girl who doesn't really understand her emotions very well 
and I was happy that he brought that up for her to really be like, okay, am I depressed? Like, am I not? And luck also helped her with that. He confessed to her that he also tried to kill himself. But that was a very honest moment for him. He like opened up her eyes to know that people who may look like they're happy and they have the perfect lives, it doesn't always mean that. And that was very important for her to see. Cause only I have these emotions and me, 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 me. And she finally realized that other people go through this. He was able to share that moment with her. And I think it definitely helped her with understanding who she is and really understanding her feelings a lot more. And I'm happy that her and Honor got a chance to make things up and hopefully they really should, you know, move forward from there. Her conversation with her father I think was also very important. I understood him a lot more as a character. I still don't agree with a lot of things that he did as a father, as a person, husband, all that stuff. But I definitely got to understand him more and to know that him as well was going through a lot in his life. And I was so, so happy that he brought up the, the idea of not only for her to go to therapy, for the whole family to go to therapy. That's the one thing I'm very, very upset about is that I wanted to see her have a therapy session. I think it would have been very important to talk thoroughly about de depression and just more insight on it, especially for young readers to um, just to understand it a lot more. And then back to Sagan again. Uh, I love that Colleen, she added stuff that are going on in this world to this book. Besides dealing with anxiety and, de and depression, she added Sagan's background. His family is from Assyria and doesn't really have mixed characters. And I like that even though for him, he knows all the things that are, are happening in that country. But he still embraces who he is and I think that's very important. He still is proud of where he's from. It really just showed like just how much of a good person he is. Even though I really liked the ending and where it did go and how it did come full circle for me, I still think that there was a lot more room to add. It just felt like it just stopped mid-sentence sort of thing. I feel like there could have been a lot more room to grow. There was still time to show Merit's growth. While I do think she did grow as a character, I really wanted to see her healing process a lot more because there's a lot that she has to do and that she has to um, heal to get back up on her feet again. As readers, we should have seen that more and just so that it could come more full circle as a book where I was felt that it was left flat for me. Even though the message was out there and light was shed on it, I just didn't like the book as a whole and just everything that happened to get to that point. That's all I have to really say about it. I will obviously continue to support Colleen Hoover always, always, always. But yeah, if you stayed around to the end, thank you so much. And please let me know all your thoughts on Without Merit. I'm really intrigued by what people are going to be thinking about this book because it's so different from all her other books. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And thank you so much for watching and sticking with me throughout this entire discussion. I know a lot was said, but a lot had to be talked about. With that, I will see you in my next review video, whatever it's going to be. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.